Hey guys, I don't know how well this video is gonna go first. Well, it's gonna look poop because it's, it is 5 a.m. and there's no light outside. The cat is in her crazy hour and I don't know how well this is gonna sound because I cannot talk too loudly. So we shall see. <laughs> After I'm done with it, if I even post this, if you are seeing it, hey, I did it somehow. I wanted to do this video because, again, I went into one of those tangent-like modes that I go. This time, it wasn't a research or it wasn't a team and the reflection on my glasses is distracting me. I'm sorry. Um, it wasn't a team or something like that. It was a place. I've been how to say you guys know that there's lots going on in my life at this moment and things are a little bit uncertain a little bit I need to sort out so as many of us do on these times of uncertainty now that we can go to the library we go to the library and my library has a big uh, a big room where it has most of its books, it has the kids section, it has some like newspapers and uh, study rooms and all of that. And then in the back of it, after what it's supposed to be the little coffee shop that it's closed, I think, in the very back of it, it has a room that I thought you couldn't like peruse because it's so out there. I thought it was something that you need a request, a license, something to go there to some kind of archive, but it's basically just more more uh, books, and it's really poorly identified as a place that you can go. It almost looks like it's a place just for the people that the library, uh, the people that run the library can go to. This little book room is amazing because nobody goes there. <laughs> That's the first thing. Second, it has lots of old books. And I am discovering some very nice different stuff because of it. Um, a lot of the books that are there were from a big um, donation to the library years and years ago. And now there's a, a thing ringing, a car alarm going on. Please stop. <laughs> I'm gonna make a little pause and wait to see if it stops so this video is not super annoying. And it stopped. Uh, like I was saying, it has th that little room. I only discovered it because they had like the English and foreign language books moved to that room. And that was a section that I usually go to a lot, even though it's very slim, very poor. <laughs> I I have looked a lot of those books and I have read quite a few by now. Um, but they changed places, they took it off the main room because they needed more space for, for comics, the big donation of comics that just happened that I'm waiting to see when it's gonna actually be there because the things are still, uh, the bookshelves are still uh, empty and the boxes. But anyway, they changed the the English written um, books to that room. That's how I found it. And most of the other rooms are either old, old books that end up there or um, books from that were from a big donation from years ago from a person called, a man called João Evangelista that I do not know exactly yet. I have to find out who he was here in this, in this city because he sounds like he was someone important, but I haven't yet found out. Really? Really? The alarm sounded again. I just... Oh, dear lord. Let's wait. Okay, let's see if we can actually finish this uh, video. 
anyway, uh, that person, or whoever he is, that I'm still gonna find out, left a lot of books, and some of them, especially the fiction one, were, um, how do you say, were binded with leather. They weren't leather first, lots of them, but they were like, uh, commissioned to be binded in leather, some of them this green, and I've seen that all of the green ones have his ex livers. Um, can I show you guys. There is ex livers with his name on top. Um, but I think that some of are in blue and red. I haven't yet checked those ones. Um, and this is just bounded in uh, leather, nothing on on the back. Great, and there only has the name here. And it, there is a certain um, beauty to it because it not even on the inside they kept the. Um, if I can show you, it's this is not a synopsis. So you pick the book. If you don't know what the book is before you grab it, you won't find out till you start reading it. And that's basically what I've been doing. I go there, sit on, on the table in the very corner, pick a book at random, and start reading it. <laughs> don't The only thing I have kept uh, in mind was the size, because I was trying... A, I, I hadn't like a lot of time and I wanted to read a book in one sitting, so I read a very small book. I was even trying to read another one. This is quite small. But then I look at the time and I had to bring this one home. But I'm hoping to take this one back tomorrow. Not today, because today is going to be a busy day. But tomorrow I'm hoping to bring this one back there. Uh, and it's been amazing. This one, if you guys are in curious about this anonymous book, it's uh, The Woman of Knockalo by Hal Kane. I'm not sure if knockahole is. It's supposed to be how you pronounce it. It's the name of a place in the island of men. And this is basically the story of a woman that lives on this farmland on the island of men where um, they built the, this camp to put the um, German the words. Words are are amazing now. Uh, the German prisoners during the First World War. Please tell me it is the first. <laughs> this is this. I know this is ridiculous, but in my mind, I haven't yet studied or read enough things about both wars, world wars, to fixed here <laughs> that it was. Um, that like just for uh, some dates or whatever, I mix things, but it, it, it has to be the first first world war one because he died before the second, if I'm not mistaken. Dear Lord, let, let it be that. <laughs> but yeah, they built there the camps uh, to put the German uh, prisoners and she is, how to say, she's one of the people that needs, that looks after this farm, her, she and her family, and they have to supply milk to the prisoners. Lots of things happen. I'm more or less in the middle of it. I kind of, I wouldn't have picked this on my own, and I'm having a ball. I, yesterday, I took this to bed, and I was falling asleep, but I wanted to read more. Part of me already knows where this is going, and but I just wanted to see it going there. It's not it's not that it's a mystery, just it is interesting. <laughs> and I wouldn't have picked this if it wasn't for the fact that this is leather bound and I don't I had no idea what this is about. And I have heard of Hulking, but I hadn't actually picked up his books. I didn't know anything about his writing. 
So that's what I wanted to talk about you. This 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 is what's happening basically now. My plans for the for my free afternoons that are not that many, but as much as I can is to go to li- the library, go to that particular room and pick a book at random just by the title itself and read. And that's amazing. How have you ever done that? If you haven't, do it. Do not just just do it. Just I don't know if and everyone has this on their libraries where they can pick up a book and not know anything about it. Like the books are like this. Some I mean, I suppose that some of the older ones are like this. Even on like the main room we have some books like this. But yeah, you, you usually your eye passes over it, and it shouldn't. <laughs> so, I have you ever done this? Have you ever just went to the library, picked the run book and read without judging the cover, without re- even reading the synopsis, just read the title, maybe the author name? I I wouldn't even let that uh, deter you from grabbing it. Maybe the title just because, let's, <laughs> just because yes, but have you ever tried this? If you have, if you haven't, please consider it. It's amazing. It opens so much, like so. It's it's just amazing because <laughs> I found out another book from another, the one that I read when I was there. It was from a Portuguese author. Uh, Fredet Castro. It was a very slim one. It is about um, someone that discovers that it has cancer and his relationship with his um, with his wife and what happened. And it was actually a nice read. I, I I flew through it, and it was a Portuguese author. I wouldn't have picked up that book. Like, if I wasn't just sitting there and picking up books from the shelves. So this... I'm I'm now uh, committed <laughs> to just go there at, when I can, pick up a book at random and just read it. There is some books there by Pearl S. Buck. I know that she uh, writes about China, or at least a lot of them pass are past in China and I haven't read any of those I haven't and I never tried and I'm, I'm maybe gonna try one or two now with this but there's I mean if this keeps pulling me there's more Hulkane there that I want to read to and I would never thought about it <laughs> so yeah do tell me if this is something that you have tried. If you don't, like I said before, try it and then come back to me and tell me that you loved it because you're gonna love it. Don't even use Goodreads. The only thing you can use Goodreads for is for you to put up the, the name of the book to see if it's like the first of a series because sometimes, at least I'm gonna have to do this with Pearl Buck because I know she has at least some trilogies Um, and I do not trust (laughs) my library to have the books in order, in any order so I will put the name of the book on Goodreads just to see um, if it is the first or the second on or whatever number it is in the trilogy or a series even then I may in some cases have like some names to pick up from before I go there I don't know but if even if I use Goodreads like that because let's be honest I will uh, I won't even read like the um, the synopsis or anything or barely look at the cover images that they put I do um, how to say if you if you're gonna 
also do that if you cannot trust your libraries on that side too please also do not look at at the description the synopsis of the books on goodreads just if you have to use it just check the number and nothing more that's it and go blind after it it just i feel Part of me is like, oh, it's still the plague out there, and you shouldn't, you don't know how things are in other countries, and you shouldn't um, tell people to go out. But we've been dealing with a plague for quite a while. If, if your country lets you go out, and you feel that you can, I'm not endorsing anyone to go out in the plague. Um, you, I'm hoping you all use your good sense, so if you can. If there is, if you are able to, because you either, uh, the library is either open or, and you are a person that are able to go there, your health is good enough and all of that, that jazz, do it. Just please do it. We all need to go more to the libraries. We all need to get out of the house more and... To be honest, we all need to read more books that we do not know anything about and just go to it. Now, you can say that I do not need any more books to read because my TBR is still quite extensive. I say you are right. <laughs> but I need to go out of the house and I'm just enjoying this as it as I'm as much as I can. I'm going. <laughs> enjoy this because it's it has felt so damn good <laughs> so yeah that's basically what i wanted to do the video about if you guys like like i already told you like five times try this do this go to your library pick up a book you don't know anything about do not read the synopsis do not judge it by the cover if it I will even say pick up an older book. Don't go YA, don't go the new releases. Go to an older book. It doesn't need to be classic per se, but older. The ones that you don't usually look at. And pick up that book. <laughs> Take it to a little seat there and read it. In case you cannot sit there, take it home and read it. <laughs> Just do it. It is worth it. Believe me. That's all for now, guys. Bye.